today is the big day. I've been waiting three years since we moved in to our foreclosure to put in new flooring. The bank put in like just the cheapest carpet possible and it has been good, but we have had a puppy. I am actually kind of excited to see what's under the carpet bed. And it's just starting to fray and come up and just matted down. So it is time. How gross is this? Oh yeah, you smell your accidents from when you're a puppy? Can you see how many stains are on this thing? You! You did this. That's so gross. We've even had this professionally cleaned like many times. Okay, so here we are six hours later. Three last night, three this morning. And I'm happy to say I think our floors are officially prepped. I'm actually gonna go over we have a lot of stains uh, with kills. It might be overkill, <laughs> but um, I just don't smell coming through. Also, there was some old water damage over here in the corner. So I'm just gonna kills it up before we start on the fun part. One. The big question is what type of flooring do you wanna put down? For me, this was a pretty easy one after I did some research. I've had wood floors in the past, but I felt like I was always like, oh my gosh, don't throw a ball for the dog because they're like scratching across. Um, the wood floors I had were really shiny and you can't ever have a dishwasher leak, spill a drink or have an animal have an accident and leave it because it'll warp your boards. So then the question is vinyl or wood laminate. Well, wood laminate are the same problems as wood floors because they're not waterproof. So to me, the answer was easy. I wanted vinyl wood floors, the nice kind. Um, they're waterproof, they're scratch resistant, uh, they're flexible for the subfloor. Two. The next thing you need to know about vinyl wood flooring, plank flooring, <coughs> is the wear layer. And the wear layer is the top <coughs> coating. Uh, it's like the clear coating over the top. And how thick it is, if it's residential, the professionals recommend 12. Three. I went to a lot of stores trying to find the exactly what I wanted, and I ended up going to Factory Outlet. I don't know if that's a national company, but I ended up getting my flooring for $2.30 a square foot, and then I found out later that it was commercial grade, which is kind of exciting, so it's a good deal. I also visited Lumber Liquidators, Menards, that's three, Lowe's, Home Depot's, and two other mom and pop stores uh, around the city. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was getting a great deal. I looked at all my options, so that gives you some ideas of where you can shop. Four. How much flooring do you need? Well, length times width gives you your square footage in the room or rooms that you want. Plus, you have to add 10% <clears throat> of that number for all your extra cuts and I don't know, it's just what everybody says, so add 10%. And then I will go on to say, then double it. <laughs> because I have so many friends that moved into a house and they put wood flooring down and then a couple years later decided they wanted it in other parts of the house and couldn't get it anymore. So get way more than you think you need. Hi. So I ordered 1,200 square feet of vinyl plank flooring and let me tell you, that is heavy. To be exact, I think it's close to one ton. So I have a big F-150 and they had it on a big pallet, a big pallet, and it ended up being like a square. So this length and width of the pallet and then up, that's about how much it was. But I actually had to take five of the boxes and put them in my cab just because of the payload in my truck, it was too heavy. It took three people to unload it from my truck, about 30 minutes. Each one was heavy, it was like 60 pounds or something. Um, you're gonna wanna put it in a different room than the one you're flooring, because you don't wanna have to move it twice. So try to put it in a different room that's close. Six. Two underlayment or not underlayment? That is the question. <laughs> 
And it's up to you. I've heard both. Uh, the guy at the store told me don't because sometimes it can like shift your whole floating floor on there. Plus it's gonna add at least $250 for, I think this room is like 22 feet by 22 feet, just for this room. Uh, I will say it does add to insulation and the quietness of the floor makes it a little bit more cushiony. So it's totally your call. Seven. Every project takes way longer than you think. And I learn this the hard way every time with every project. So I always forget about the demo part. So this demo, we had to take up the carpet. We had to take up the tack strips, which my husband used a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to do that. I used a little crowbar, so however you wanna do that. We had to get all the staples up that was holding the carpet pad in. There was like a thousand. That alone, just getting the floor to a point that was like cleaned up and smooth, six hours. Yes, six hours. And then I think another hour about it took us to spray the kills down. Eight. There's a lot of trash with this project. I had six huge trash bags, like the builder, whatever, big black ones that are like industrial strength, filled a carpet pad. Not to mention, I have a big roll of carpet to dispose of. Keep that in mind. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know yet. <laughs> yep, minus the carpet roll. Nine. Your subfloor needs to be very clean and very even. And that was the whole six, seven hour part. Squeaky clean. Where like a nail had gone in and come back up to like sand it down. So really take the time to do that because if you don't you have something under your vinyl floor, eventually that vinyl floor is gonna wear unevenly and show. Ten! You only have one chance to screw down your subfloor and make sure it's not squeaky. But we got no squeaks. Don't skip number 10. You will regret it. Do not. 11. Which way are you going to run your wood floor? Most people do it parallel with the front door. So you walk in here, your front door, you're going to run it this way. And typically, that's like the longest direction of the room. It's gonna go into the kitchen. So it's gonna make all my door threshold transitions easier. Look at how Cause I'm just gonna have one board that goes across with the transition strip versus like, like that. It took so long. But you don't have to. 12. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Measure the length of your room. Because, okay, so measure the distance if your vinyl planks are say eight inches, to, I don't know how big they get, 12 inches long. Measure how many you're gonna have across. The reason being, you don't wanna end up with your last row being two inches or less. <laughs> but if you wanna look like it was professionally done, your first and your last row will be the same width, whatever that may be. So do some math, do some calculating, um, cause you're gonna probably have to cut your, f ooh, that's a lot of cutting now that I think about it, <laughs> all your long boards on both sides of the room, but it will be worth it in the end. 13. Is your wall straight? Is it? Who knows? Exterior walls tend to be straighter than interior walls. So if you have a little laser leveler thing, use it cause you don't, your, your rows might be straight against one wall, but then when you get to the very end, it might be totally wonky. 14! 14! Okay, with a floating floor, you want to make sure you leave at least a fourth of inch gap. So pretend your wall goes all the way straight down. Don't ever butt your vinyl piece up flat against, like, like look, if I did this, I know mine goes under. Don't make it as tight as possible. Don't do this because with like expanding, contracting and shifting, I have a friend who did it this way. It seems to make sense, right? But the middle of his floor ended up buckling because it just didn't have any, any give on the sides. Also, the reason that you do this is if say someday you need to repair your floor, they make these stretchers to like pop open the floor, say in the middle and put a new one in and you gotta have that give. So to stagger your boards, you're gonna wanna cut them and then you'll start back 
the next row with a long one. Also, make sure you read your instructions because they might have some specific things on there. Mine is saying don't ever have a board that's less than six inches because it's not stable. It also says you need to uh, pick, stagger where you get the boards from. So lay out four boxes and just rotate which one you take out as you're doing your lines. And that way all the colors will match up and be even. Keep an eye on your repeating patterns and your knots. Try not to have the exact same pattern right by each other because it might look obvious that it's like a fake print. Work smarter, not harder, and save money and materials. Actually, just save cuts. Okay, so we're cutting this piece off to fit over here, and then we're gonna use the, the excess little cutoff to start our next row over there. And it's been working really well. So you can do the pattern that I gave you earlier, or you can go just totally random, which is what we did here. All right. This will make your life so much easier. It's less than $60 at Home Depot. It's gonna cut your vinyl flooring so much easier than a box cutter. Oh my gosh, if you're doing a big room, just don't do it. Pay the $60, I promise. And so, watch this. I wonder if I can do it one-handed, I don't really know. Boom, there you have it. Nice clean cut. I took a lot of time using our laser level to make sure that this first row is like dead on, that the joints are on, our wall is super uneven and crookedy like the trim is. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put two screws in each plank up right where the quarter inch round is gonna be just to hold it steady as I do tap and do all the other ones. And then at the end, I will take those screws out because remember, we want it to float, we want it to move, just not as we're installing it. 18. So you can buy a tapping block or you can make one. So just use a piece of your flooring Turn it into a square. Then I cut off. My box knife is really dull. The extra edge. Um, look here. You need to tap your floor. You just pop it in. Secures it in. Just like that. Now I do know they have tapping blocks that like grab when you're at the like if there's a wall right here that grabs it and can make it tight. So we'll see when I get down to the end if that's something that would be useful and necessary. So I think I finally, after doing half the floor, figured out the best way to do it. What you're gonna do is you slide in the short edge first as close as you can to the other, but where the lip will still go down flat like that, right? And then you tilt, you grab it here, you tilt the whole thing up, and you wanna get this joint in first before you worry about down there. So you kind of wiggle it. Yep, there we go. And then you worry about the rest of your joint until it's snug. And then you're gonna come back with your tapping block, which this works great, by the way. No need to buy one on those side, I mean, they're really cheap. And you're gonna tap down first, down the row. And then I tap kind of randomly, but I try to tap where there's a seam to get it lined up really tight and then I come back on my original seam and there you have it. That is the easiest way to get these in really tight, really fast. Okay, so when you get to a floor register, you can cut it out now or I'm gonna wait till the end and cut it out. So that way it's just easier. on it for a couple months now absolutely oh, love it joy. like two days into putting it in like the dog threw up everywhere and I'm like this is amazing it was so easy to clean up we did extend it into our kitchen here's number 20 so we put it over tile I wish I would have put the underlayment down on the tile it didn't really matter in here because our floor was super even but in here you can kind of see the lines see right there like the diagonals of the tile um, and so I'm afraid over time it's gonna wear unevenly. 
I hope you learned a few things from this video. I hope it prevented some mistakes and good luck on your flooring. Please hit subscribe below. We really appreciate it. Thanks.